Okay, so what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about a very common procedure in my office and many offices called root canal therapy. Now, root canal therapy, root canal treatment, is um, it's it's gotten a bad rap over the years in in movies, in media, all over the place. People will use a root canal as a description of something horrible, something painful. Most of the time, root canal therapy is completed, and the response from patients is that's it. So, uh, you know, we we look at root canal therapy as <clears throat> it's one of the last lines of defense when we're trying to preserve a tooth or save a tooth. Now, some people, the reason why they have such a bad experience is they waited too long. They came to my office after the infection got bigger and swollen and uh, gotten to the point where managing the pain, uh, managing the experience is difficult. And uh, teeth are, are treated much more easily when treated in the early stages and be, before there's swelling and, and, and infection and, and draining and bad tastes and things like that. When does a tooth need a root canal? So, uh, you know, spontaneous pain is probably the, the, probably the, the, the one sign or symptom that we use as, as definitive of, okay, uh, if the tooth hurts before you do anything to it, if it wakes you up from a deep sleep, you've gone to bed at night and then you wake up in pain, uh, that can be a, a strong indication that the tooth is uh, irreversible pulpitis. Now, um, an abscess is when the nerve of a tooth has died, and then the infection that shows up on an x-ray that looks like a circle at the tip of the root, if there's an abscess there, uh, that would be an indication that uh, the, the tooth would need root canal therapy. And often the question is, well, let my, my body will just handle it. My immune system is fantastic. And the problem is the immune system can't touch it. The problem of this, the source of the infection is inside the tooth, and there is no blood flow or no uh, immune system conduit. So the source, the solution to the source of the problem is either extract the tooth or remove the source of the infection internally inside the tooth. Now, what can cause that abscess to happen? Trauma to the tooth. You can take a baseball, playing shortstop when you're a kid, and, and a, you, the ball kicks off of a rock and hits you in the face. That trauma to the nerve can kill it. Now, sometimes it takes a long time for that trauma to actually kill the tooth. And so sometimes it's very difficult for us to determine when this started. While well, someone in their 20s, and when we do the history, we find out that they took the uh, the ball when they were playing shortstop when they were in elementary school. It took 20 years for it to finally rear its head. But So it, it isn't something that always happens right away. Now, also uh, another cause is a large fracture or a large cavity. You know, the, the tooth chips and the, the broken part exposes the nerve. That's going to require a root canal. Uh, if a cavity is so deep that it's grown to the point where it all the way, got all the way inside and accessed and exposed the nerve to the bacteria, well, then that's going to need a root canal. So, and, and to be honest, every once in a while, sometimes the very first time you treat a tooth, when a, there's a filling that is necessary, the, the heat generated in making that filling can cause the turf tooth to die. And despite the fact that it was a very small cavity and small filling, some teeth just go south right at the, at the get-go. So uh, sometimes it's not due to the fault of anybody. It just, it just happens. So the question is, what, what's the treatment? What do we do? How does, this, how does this work? So we start with a proper diagnosis. And, uh, and the reason for that is sometimes the, we can't tell that the patient is not able to determine what tooth is the problem. They might have a strong assumption, but sometimes they point to one tooth, but it's referred pain from another tooth. So we need to determine which tooth is the problem and if it's uh, reversible or not. Sometimes pain is reversible. We just do a filling or a crown and the, and the pain goes away. So we're going to do, a, a, we call it PPPM, uh, palpation, percussion, probing, and mobility. And then we're going to do some thermal tests on the tooth. We just need to go through that series of tests to determine the severity of the condition and, and the, the correct tooth. I had an instructor in dental school. He said there are lies, damn lies, and x-rays. So x-rays aren't always identifying the problem. Sometimes x-rays are, are, can, be, can be misleading. So we need tests beyond just the x-rays. So once we've identified the, uh, uh, the culprit, we create a small hole into the tooth and uh, unroof the nerve to give us direct access. We, we need to remove all of the diseased tissue and the pulp tissue, clean it all out, and then have access to the root canal system. Once we have access to the root canal system, we introduce a series of files. Uh, I use a rotation 
device or a rotary system that uh, will, as it turns and rotates, it cleans out the, the canal system. And then we introduce a, a, a sequence of files that are progressively larger. So it'll widen out the canal system to allow us to then clean the system. So cleaning and shaping is the step one. We need to irrigate. We're going to flush out the bad tissue and the bacteria and the toxins and uh, debris from the filing and shaping. So we clean, shape, we irrigate, we flush out everything, all the bad stuff, and then we're going to want to seal it all up. And the best way to imagine that is if you're caulking a window, you're using something to seal the edges so that the bacteria can't get back inside. So we use a, also a cone, a material called gutta percha. A little fun fact, it's the same type of material that's at the core of golf balls. So this rubbery type of a material is... Uh, combined with antibiotic uh, products and coated with the sealer and then it fills the canal system. This, this is going to seal everything out, but it's also going to give a little bit of increased strength because now we've hollowed the tooth out, it's going to be prone to fracture. So once the root canal treatment has been completed, the overall treatment is not done. We need to actually then put a crown on a tooth after the root canal has been completed. Because of the hollowing out of the process of doing root canal therapy, the tooth is prone to fracture because of this. So by placing a full coronal structure, a crown over the tooth, we're going to prevent fracture. We're going to preserve this tooth. Otherwise, if left untreated, it's very likely it'll split and fracture. If a tooth chips or fractures and it had never had a root canal, it's probably just going to chip in a, in a way that we can put a crown or a veneer over the tooth. If it's been hollowed out, it's more brittle it's likely to, to split. So when we get a fracture, that crack probably will propagate down the entire length of the root. And at that point, there's, it's hopeless and it's impossible to restore and the tooth would have to be removed. The question is, how long do you have be between taking the, having the root canal and then doing the crown? Your guess is as good as mine. I've had some patients where they waited a couple years before they finally had something done and, and it worked out just fine. At least we think. Uh, we didn't see any visible cracks indicating that there was a problem. But we've had other people who had waited years previously and then decided to wait again. And within two weeks of root canal therapy, the tooth fractured in such a way we had to pull the tooth. So it's impossible to know how long you've got. My recommendation is the sooner the, sooner the better because uh, uh, I'm, I'm not a very good gambler. I always lose when I gamble. So in, in this case, the price of losing in the, the gamble would be losing the tooth, and who knows what that will lead to. Dr. Timmerman is known internationally with licenses in multiple states in the United States plus Belgium and Dubai for cosmetic, implant, and sleep dentistry with fellowships in the International Congress for Oral Implantology and the Academy of General Dentistry and a diplomate in the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. If you would like to become a patient of Dr. Timmerman or simply have questions, please go to our website, www.drtimmerman.com. That is www.drtimmerman.com. Or call us at 206-241-5533. Or you could email questions for an episode of a future podcast at thewholetoothpodcast at gmail.com.